did you deal with anything more ordinary than bubonic plague? After my residency, I was uh, transferred to a 35-bed hospital, including bassinets, uh, and uh, ambulatory care clinic, uh, primary care only, uh, in Winslow, in Winslow, Arizona, which also served the the Navajo the, the Navajo population, and there, there wasn't a psychiatrist on the entire uh, Navajo reservation. Uh, th there was a a town about sixty miles away that we could send patients to to get a psychiatrist consult, and then then they were seen in our clinic uh, by by a social worker, and so our medical director came to me, I maybe been there six weeks or so. And he said, Lenny, he says, I feel really uncomfortable with the psychotropic prescribing. He says, I don't know anything about it. Uh, he, he said, and he said, you know, the, the social worker is sort of looking over this stuff after the, the, the meds are prescribed by, by the consultant. Uh, I want you to review and approve all the prescriptions for psychotropics. And I said, okay, Dudley, sure. Well, I didn't, all I knew is what I'd had in, in pharmacology and in, in pharmacy school, I, you know, I, I knew that uh, phenothiazines were, were were a three a three ring structure, you know, <laughs> but I didn't know a whole lot a whole lot clinically, and so I started reading a lot and I started interacting with the patients, uh, and really became really fascinated uh, by by the disease states and and how they how they affect people and and how they affect people's lives, and in particular at that point in time with with the with the disease schizophrenia. And just the, the devastating fact uh, impact that it has on people's lives, uh, you know, pretty much for about 80, 80 to eighty five percent of people are diagnosed with schizophrenia. They, you know, they have they have a lifelong uh, lifelong illness and with exacerbations and sort of a downward uh, course uh, over over time. And even though our treatments have improved, they're still far far from perfect. Hmm. So is it fair to say that this is what led to your career in psychiatric pharmacy practice? It's the reason that I decided when I went back to my, my advanced training that I would, I would specialize in, in, in psychiatry. And, and, and you know, the, the other thing that I, that I learned, uh, particularly in, in, in Winslow, where we were really quite isolated, you know, four or five physicians, two pharmacists and, and, and nurses and, and, a, and a couple of lab techs, was that you don't need you don't need fancy buildings and expensive technology to provide good health care. Uh, you need people that really care and, and are committed. And I also learned the the importance of interdependency uh, and relying on one another and really learned about team based care uh, before it became a fad. <laughs> the foster care system in the United States is, is that when children are, are taken away from their biological parents because they're unable to care for them for a variety of reasons. Sometimes it's substance abuse. Sometimes it's mental illness. Uh, sometimes the, the children are, are are physically or emotionally abused. Uh, they're put in with with families that are referred to as, as as foster parents, and and so these children, because of the the, the situations that they they came from, and they're, and they're taken out of their families, uh, uh, end up having you know much higher incidence of emotional and mental problems than 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 other. Children, and they typically come from from uh, from impoverished families as well. And we also know that uh, low income people are, are at higher risk for for mental disorders as well. And in the uh, press and in the, in, in the state, uh, there were a number of uh, journalist investigations of inappropriate prescribing. And, and, and in fact, in one of our state agencies, uh, started looking into the, the prescribing through the. The state Medicaid program, which is our, our public assistance program uh, for, for poor people, and, and foster children automatically uh, receive those services when they when they go into foster care. And there's a real problem with just way too many medications being used in children at the same time. Sometimes as many as eight, eight and ten, and and, tw and twelve medications. And so, in 2003, our state legislature uh, directed the the, the 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 state health and human services agency. Uh, to develop a task force to come up with recommendations uh, to how to address the situation in, in terms of looking at, at the care of children in foster care that had, that had mental disorders. And, and I was on that task force. And one of the recommendations was that we put together a, a multidisciplinary committee to develop uh, a, a prescribing parameters uh, for ch children that were in foster care. And so we released those in 2005. And and we've updated them every two or three years uh, since then. In fact, we'll probably start another round of updating 
uh, this uh, later this year. And, and, and in 2019, when that version was updated, the state agency decided to expand uh, their, their use, not just for children in foster care, but all children that were receiving uh, uh, mental health services through the state Medicaid program, again, the, the state uh, public assistance program uh, uh, for, for, for health care. And we saw over time that, that uh, the use overall of, of psychotropic medications decreased, uh, the use of drugs within the same therapeutic class, you know, same mechanism of action uh, uh, decreased, as well as just the total number of medications uh, decreased over time. Now, with all the stresses during COVID, that's tweaked up a bit, but it's still much, much lower than it was uh, when, when we rolled this out in 2005. 